Hi, Yuri. How are you? Thank you for meeting with me today. Always happy to see you. That's, that's fantastic. <laughs> when we return, this is a platform that we started back when the pandemic, uh, you know, in March 2020. And the idea was to uh, start some kind of collaboration, given the fact that we were all at home from Canada uh, and Argentina, um, exchanging, you know, views and content and uh, profiles from different artists, curators, uh, cultural agents. And of course, the pandemic was longer than what we all thought so. And so the, uh, this whole project and platform kept growing and growing. And so today we, we are um, doing some um, homage to Black History Month. And of course, I thought about your project, Northeast Freedom. So I'd like to introduce you just a little bit for our audience. Uh, Yuri Deutsch is a photographer, artist, and witness. And um, he was born in uh, Czechoslovakia, uh, then uh, was refuged, as you call yourself, in London, and then finally moved to uh, Canada, Toronto. And that's uh, where luckily I was able to meet you and Northeast Freedom, a project that uh, it took very long for you to do and um, with amazing photographs that the whole audience is going to be able to uh, see once all of this is uploaded in our website when we return. So I would like to find out a little bit more about that project, what uh, was on your mind, how it came about, and uh, tell us a little bit about, um, about it. And thank you for being with us, of course. Okay, so Norsi's Freedom, like all my projects, started by serendipity. But sometimes I wonder if it's really serendipity or like Italian says, a tutto scritto. That maybe it was all written that I should do this. I was in Washington in uh, 2015 or 16, I don't remember, and we were doing another exhibition there when I was invited uh, to Canadian Embassy for a tea. And on the way to Embassy, we passed Museum of uh, Afro-American History. And then when I came to Embassy, I just mentioned uh, what a beautiful building we just saw on the way. And embassy staff was telling me, you know, we would love to do some project in conjunction with that museum. So, you know, sometimes just you need one little kennel in your head and then it grows to a plant and then this one grow to a forest. I have a little cottage on Lake Huron and not far from there is a little town called Owen Sound. And one day when I went to the town, I saw a in a park, I saw a monument to Underground Railroad. And I was wondering why in this little town in uh, about 200 kilometers from Toronto, there's a monument. So I call City Hall and I find out that uh, uh, Underground Railroad, which I knew something about, ended at Owen Sound. So I was curious if somebody actually still lives there from that era. That was 150 years ago. And on my surprise, and after many phone calls and chasing certain people, I came uh, across this lady called uh, Bonita de Matera. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. I... Bonita de Matea. So I... I was looking for her at, uh, not, I was going to say yellow pages, but not the yellow pages. <laughs> uh, Did you Google? <laughs> and uh, eventually I found her. It took, a, again, every, nothing happened right away. So it took me a long time to, to find her. And when I finally find her, I ask her if I can meet her. And she says, uh, we have a family meeting this weekend. If you want to come, you're more than welcome. So I drove to this place. It was far, uh, about, I don't know, half an hour from Owen Sound, in the middle of nowhere. And here, this whole family of people who look different than anybody else. They were all mixed. Um, they immediately showed me there were some books from the past. And I just discovered it's like peeling the onion, like you peel after peel and you find something else. 
So they were showing me that they great, great, great grandmother uh, married this uh, descendant of slaves and they have 12 children and it just was phenomenal. And they had the pictures of that family. So I asked if I can take some picture of people who were there at the meeting and she said, sure, go ahead. So that's how it started. And then it grew to a much larger project because I find out that most people still live in the small places in Southern Ontario. So I drove to that place, which is uh, again, opposite direction of Owen Sound at on the border between United States and Canada. And I find little villages which are occupied today by descendants of slaves who came to Canada. And then on the way to one of the places, I come across Uncle Tom's cabin, which I never knew it was in Canada. And I was very familiar with that book because in communist Czechoslovakia, this was mandatory reading, Uncle Tom's cabin. So I went in and I had big and very funny conversation with the staff telling them about the book, which I read as a child. And then they told me that they have a library of every, every edition of Uncle Tom's cabin book from all over the world. And of course, we found the version from Czechoslovakia, which I read as a kid. So it was sort of very come home kind of feeling. And of course, the whole project was, it, it became extremely close to me because it talks about running to freedom. And I suppose you have to go through it yourself to, to get into it. I don't know if it would interest me if I was born Canadian, but going through the journey of uh, running from communist Czechoslovakia to West, and then I'm not comparing that, but there's a strong uh, sympathy. Yes, I, I do. I mean, that's, that's how I, I, while you were telling this story, I remember, and definitely all of, uh, I don't think all of your uh, production, but definitely the one before this one. And I think maybe you are on that road and maybe you change again as all artists, you know, you need um, different things and uh, to, um, you know, make you uh, creative. Um, but uh, your previous uh, series and, and project was Last Folio. And I, I, that's, that's how really I, I, I meet you through our dear friend, uh, Kati Krausova, your producer for that amazing, incredible uh, project that, you know, it's an ongoing and traveling exhibition to its day. Um, Just and, open uh, I think probably there is a link between, uh, of course. Oh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Uh, you are, you know, you are of your, what your experience made you. And last folio lasted uh, more than 20 years and still and going. It's still, still going, you know. I was talking uh, to uh, yeah, Katia right. lately and it's in Portugal, you know, as, as, as we speak. So, you know, it's an incredible international show, that one. Um, and uh, we, we'll, we will also uh, add to this project, Northeast Freedom, all the links for last folio so can, people can actually get to see that incredible production of yours and, uh, you know, Katya. And um, it will be uh, very, very interesting for people to get to see. But uh, coming back to Northeast Freedom, um, I'd like for, for you to tell me a little bit about, you know, the, the shots, which um, right now we're, we're not going to be showing because it'll be interesting for people just to explore themselves into the whole um, project uh, through, through our website in, when we return. Um, tell me a little bit about your favorite shots of how you came about and how they are all, um, you know, thought around. Well, every picture from this series is from previous series have its own history and uh, sometimes you can be lucky by uh, circumstances but first 
when I start this whole project, I have to decide uh, what is going to be predominant uh, theme. And that's something, you know, I have to determine because you cannot go to this kind of route and not knowing. You have to have some direction. So I give myself direction. And direction was, and this is after a few shots, that I will do pictures which are not black and white and they're not color. They're sort of faded colors. That transition between past and today, that was one decision, which was very important. Second decision was not to show anything contemporary. So the people are, are isolated in a, in a background which either represent nature, and the reason was because they descended with were running, and that was 150 years ago. And the only thing which is same today as it was then is sky, water, nature. And I'd like to keep to those three elements in the when I was doing the picture. Not, not always you succeed, but one of the strongest picture which we're using on the cover of the booklets and every time we have exhibition, and sometimes this gentleman comes with us, is a picture we, we did in a small town in Southern Ontario, where we were shooting near water, but there were some chains from the boat as a background. And the picture had a very strong connotation of slavery. And it was just coincidental, I find this place. But again, maybe there's no such a thing like coincidence, maybe it was meant to find this place. So the picture really evoke the strands and breaking from the chains. Uh, so that's so far been my most favorite picture. But of course, there's many others who I love as well. Of course, of this course. One has become and um, my, my uh, what, what was the, um, the uh, process for uh, choosing that title, which is, you know, so... Um, powerful. I was, uh, sometimes you get lucky. Uh, I was sent to uh, Nova Scotia. Oh. <laughs> I was sent to Nova Scotia to um, to do some, to, do, to give a lecture. And during the free time, I went to library and front of the library, there was a monument, and on the top of the monument, there was a poem. And the poem was Norse's Freedom. So I contacted the guy who wrote it, and he's a professor at uh, University in Toronto. And I said to him, would you mind if I can use the title of your poem for this project? And he said, sure, I would love that. Like you mentioned, um, also the uh, Canadian embassy at the beginning for, uh, you know, part of this project. And uh, they are one of, of course, they are our main sponsor and the reason why we are, uh, you know, continuing to, to do this uh, whole content for when we return. Uh, so hopefully we can we can have that show coming up here in uh, Buenos Aires, you know, sometime in the future. You know, it's interesting that... Uh... When we had the show now in Lisbon, the North, uh, last folio, a Canadian ambassador wrote me a letter saying, telling me that she would like to know more about North's freedom as well, because Portugal was very much involved in slave trade. I hope we get to see Northeast freedom traveling a little bit around the world as well. It will. It will. As a matter we're starting another project very soon called Centurions. And it's about 100-year-old World War II veterans. Uh, because of COVID, you know, we sort of slow down on it. But uh, I'm really looking forward. Thank you, Yuri, for your time. And uh, we'll definitely see you soon, hopefully in Toronto. Come in. It's lots of snow here. Welcoming you. <laughs> Thank you very much.